I would like to compare ourselves uh, with the BRICS if we really have a vision uh, 10 years down the road to join uh, emerging economies, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. So these are the emerging economies now and uh, uh, only this morning I was uh, saying in this one of the SART Chambers uh, seminar that uh, look at uh, uh, the, uh, hist how history changes. These countries, these were the net re recipients at some time. They were developing countries and they were receiving loans and grants for IMF. And now for the first time in the history, one observed last week uh, that uh, BRICS is actually uh, providing loan to IMF so that IMF can bail out uh, European economy. Uh, and uh, there's nothing that, they, they had the same sort of problems. Uh, if someone says that in China you don't have governance problem or in China you don't have corruption problem or in India or in Brazil or in Russia, so we will be living in utopia. So it's just uh, thinking uh, out of box. Now if we look at uh, India for example, uh, the, uh, um, uh, the total amount of oil in their uh, energy mix is 1%. They have 58% coal and they have 22% hydro. And of course nowadays the war of economy is being uh, uh, fought uh, on cost of production. And if a country like Pakistan, which is dependent on oil for its energy production, uh, when the oil prices go up, and they may go up if the Iran-US tension uh, keeps on continuing, so whenever they, they will go up, it would simply not be sustainable uh, for our businesses, for our factories, for our houses, to actually afford that electricity, or to afford that uh, energy. Uh, today's price is almost $107 per barrel. Uh, and if we look at uh, the average prices uh, during last six months, it keep, keeps on fluctuating. So average is around $100, $403 per barrel. Now, in a way, we are producing our electricity uh, almost at uh, 18 to 22 rupees per unit. And then we are selling it at 12 to 13 rupees per unit, uh, which simply uh, shows that uh, we are one, not sustainable. Second, our business model is simply not uh, uh, viable. And we can't sustain this way uh, if we don't have uh, the fiscal cushion. Uh, the third thing that I want to uh, submit that uh, we don't have uh, to be uh, filthy rich to take care of our circular debt. We don't need any external money uh, to take care of this debt. All we need to do, and here again, uh, uh, the point I'm trying to make that perhaps our budget makers if they don't have fiscal cushion, uh, they need to think innovative. If they can think innovative, if they can think out of box, uh, perhaps they can come up with some sort of uh, solutions uh, that would work. Uh, the moment we uh, receive, uh, reduce this uh, 700 billion uh, rupees circular debt from industry, uh, of course our credit rating would improve. Uh, the thing that we want to tell to IMF and World Bank that we can uh, do reforms in our power sector uh, that will come into effect. Uh, and the good thing is that the uh, government won't have to uh, spend any single penny. Whatever money they would be uh, releasing uh, from the exchequer, uh, it's uh, just one check that would circulate and uh, uh, by the end of the day, they would receive that money back. Uh, so uh, perhaps uh, these sort of measures uh, that they should take uh, in uh, the next uh, budget in the short term, in the longer term, as I told you, that we need to uh, really think of our energy mix. I'm not advocating uh, that we should only go for coal. Uh, of course, uh, uh, there are more cleaner energy alternatives as well. We have a uh, uh, small hydro, we have a huge potential for solar, we have a uh, potential for wind. Uh, so perhaps one should also look at the green energy. But in the short term period, perhaps coal is, a bet, uh, is a, not a bad option. One can uh, go for coal. Uh, and uh, we should try minimizing our dependence uh, on uh, imported oil because in the long run it's not sustainable uh, and that would be extremely difficult uh, for any uh, government, either this government or whoever would form the government uh, after next election to sustain in the longer run. Thank you very much. I would like to open up the floor to, for the questions and answers and if in one liner, if I may sum it, for this year fiscal framework is at the heart of everything. So my question is again, I will revert back to the basic question. What about our foreign debt? Why it is going increasing with, with the dollar-rupee ratio?
one thing is that we should uh, leave this state of denial. We should uh, recognize uh, what, where are the faults. We should diagnose uh, where are the shortcomings. And perhaps we should try looking for uh, political solutions through political will. Where are the political parties? They should come up with some sort of consensus. Now, for all practical purposes, uh, all the parties which are in the parliament, uh, somehow or other, they are in power, either at federal level or in provincial level or in coalition, etc., etc. So it, was, it is their duty, if we talk of uh, parliamentary supremacy, it's their duty uh, to come up with some sort of consensus and uh, give some political will to uh, resolve these uh, economic issues. But what I'm trying to say that theoretically speaking, uh, our, uh, economic, uh, uh, any economic analyst can say that the things are uh, quite difficult for any government. Even if uh, we were in government, all three of us, if we are in government today, uh, of course we would like to first uh, take care of our uh, lenders, uh, the, all the debt that we have to pay. Then we'll take care of defense and security. It's a second call. We can't touch it. And then we have, uh, have nothing in our kitty that we could uh, uh, spend anywhere else. Uh, so then we'll be perhaps uh, slightly be selfish and we'll try to spend on day-to-day -day administration and our own expenditures. And then we'll think of people of Pakistan uh, uh, who deserve. So this is the practical situation. Uh, and as I told you with this circular debt example, that perhaps we need to think of some sort of uh, out-of-box thinking, uh, the rev revenue uh, want generated, some sort of public-private partnership, some sort of uh, uh, looking uh, ways uh, how we can uh, increase our revenue, how we can increase livelihood opportunities. Because either we would have to increase the kitty, uh, the size of the pie, or we have to uh, reduce uh, the share of uh, the largest sh shareholders. Uh, which is debt and which is defense. Yes, definitely, because uh, public is not privy to government meetings, government uh, uh, thinking, and whatever is being done behind the closed door in Ministry of Finance or FBR. So these people who are knowledgeable, they tell people at large ke what is government thinking and what are our options and what are our limitations and where we really stand. Whether we have to beg foreign donors, that is uh, IMF or World Bank, or our petrol dollars, or Japan, or Paris, uh, uh, that uh, group. So people are forewarned, okay, look here, what are our options, where do we stand? Whether it is good position or bad position. You don't complain, we have no options, we have to go along the current, that, that is dollar versus uh, rupees uh, depreciation. And other limitation, rising uh, petrol bill and uh, energy problem, food problem. So I think people are forewarned okay, what is the budget coming, whether it will be a pleasure or it was painful. I think it's extremely important because what it does is it uh, disseminates the critical issues to the public. One, they're open to the public. Uh, and the, uh, the, the general public is encouraged to come and attend these seminars. So they listen to experts on what the challenges are. They present their own views on what the budget should look like. And of course, um, because policy, there's always a disconnect between policy makers and the average person, it's important that the average person presents his or her view on what is important for them, uh, what economic challenges and difficulties they are facing, and how the government should address these. That's important. And do you think the government should get any guideline from this uh, seminar? The purpose is that they should. Whether they do or not is a separate issue. But the whole purpose of these seminars is that the government should also be represented and they should participate in a two-way manner uh, with the average public and uh, outside experts. I, I don't think so that at this point of time, just few days before the budget is, going to, is being announced, there would be any benefit for this seminar uh, because it, it would have been more better that such exercise should have been done at government level well before the budget, at least three, four months, three, four months before. At this point of time, the government, I think, as we have heard from the news, that the government has decided that what should be presented in the budget. But this is just for the sake of discussion and maybe somebody is listening and some of the proposals may be catered for at the time of announcement of the budget.